All right, and welcome back. So today we're going to be going over how to call signals and groups. They're a little bit different than one another, but they both can achieve generally the same things with groups being a bit more powerful, but also a bit harder to use while signals can be great, especially built in signals for hooking up logic without having to get dive into code. So what we're going to be using them for today is we're going to be using them to score points when you damage any of these targets and then also to once you have destroyed the targets to display a victory UI as well as destroy all the targets that aren't there using another group. So first off, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to go ahead and create a child node of the, let's just make it a child node of the player. So we're going to make this a control and this is going to allow us to have UI. And once you click it, it'll automatically go into 2D. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and use this as kind of the container. And we're going to set the anchors preset is going to be full rect. This way we've got a UI that covers the entire screen. Let's go ahead and add in a child node, which is going to be just a label. And we'll make this one just a little bit bigger. And let's go ahead and put it as center alignment. And let's say score equals zero. And let's go ahead and make the vertical alignment also be center. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go down to layout. We're going to go to position and set it to anchors. And we're going to set that to center top. Let's call that score label. And let's just duplicate that and let's call it, I don't know, something like victory label. And we'll hide that first one so we can edit this one. And it says, congratulations. All right, that's good enough. I may have misspelled congratulations, but regardless. Go ahead and go over to tweening. And we're just going to copy this. And we're going to call it damageable event node. That's good enough. And we'll do the same for Godot script. We're going to move both of these to the folders. Before we get started on that, we've got one more thing to do, and that's to create the script for the actual score container. So let's go ahead and make a new script in C Sharp, and we're going to be calling it point container. And we'll do the same for Godot script. Let's go ahead and put the damageable events node Godot script onto damageable. And I'm just going to set this up like I had before. All right, so now that we've got that, we should be able to go ahead and start code. So we're going to dive in. First, we're going to jump into points container, and we're actually going to make the code that creates and displays the score and the victory label. Then we'll go back and we'll change the damageable code to call that code. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so first we're going to go ahead and create a couple of variables here. They're going to be our exports, and we're going to make them score label and victory label, and these are going to be of type label. We're going to be using these to display the score and just a victory message, respectively. Next up, we're going to add a variable for the current points. And we're going to set this as an integer, and we're going to set it to zero for the time being. Then we'll create a new Boolean called has1. And this is just going to make sure that we don't have any issues on calling victory more than once. Next, we're going to create a function called onPointsAdded, with points integer being a parameter for that function. Then all we're going to do is we're going to take the current points, and we're going to add our new points to them. And of course, we're going to set the score label dot text to being score colon plus current points dot to string in C sharp. But in Godot script, it's just going to be str and then in parentheses current points. That's how you get the string out of a number in Godot script. Next, we're going to create a final function that's going to be called on victory. And first off, we're going to check to see if we've already won. This is just going to be a safety check to make sure we don't call this multiple times. And if so, we're just going to return. Next, we're going to then make the has one variable be true so that this won't get called more than once. Finally, what we're going to do is we're going to do, call the function get tree dot call group in both languages. And this is going to call a method get on a given group, in this case, the group being damageable nodes and the method being on destroyed. And this is how you activate group events in Godot. Next, finally, we're just going to make the score label visible equal false and the victory label visible equal true. And this should get the message out. And once we get back to Godot, we'll go ahead and make those group nodes have that group.
All right, and we're back in Godot over here. So now that we are actually calling these groups, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create these groups. So if we go over to Damageable and we hit Node up here at the top, you'll see Signals and Groups. Signals are events that are have occurred within the node. You have some default built-in ones here for the node. You also have built-in ones for almost every type of node in Godot. You can also create your own, and we'll get to that in a moment. You can also add groups. So if we go to Manage Groups right here, you can see we have no groups. And go in real quick and add damageable nodes as a group on the damageable node up here. So if we go to manage groups, you can see all of the nodes which currently qualify as that group and all of the nodes that don't. But we do have this damageable. And so you can keep track of all of the damageable nodes or all of the AI or whatever you have assigned to various groups here. And that's based off of which group on the left you select. You can also add or remove them. So what we're going to do next, we're going to go ahead and modify the damageable script that we have and we're going to add in functionality for calling groups and signals as right now the score container does nothing on its own all right so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a couple new exports the first one being the hit points that the objects will be started with we'll just be subtracting one each time they get hit and this will be of course an integer and Following this, we're going to also need the container node. There's going to be a node 3D, and this is going to be useful for just destroying the node when it's done. And lastly, we're going to create the actual signal. So in C Sharp, this is in brackets signal. It is not export. And it'll be signal public delegate void on destruction event handler. Now, event handler has to be at the end of the name in C Sharp, whereas it doesn't in Godot script. And it is removed when do, calling the event, so you don't have to look at it, but it will have to be at the end of every event name, every signal name. Then last thing we're going to need is a Boolean that is just end of game. This makes sure that this doesn't get called multiple times. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a function or a void that is just going to be called on destroyed. And first we're going to set the end of game to be true. Then we're going to set the hit points to zero, and then we're just going to call the on hit function. That way it'll go through its normal damage function. It'll look normal. It'll look cohesive. But then once it's done, we're going to check that hit points. And if it is zero, we're just going to destroy it as opposed to continuing on and resetting. So we're going to need to create that function to destroy it. So that's going to be on complete destruction. And all we're going to do is just find the container node and hit Q free. Next, we're going to move down to the on hit function. And before we get started, we should go ahead and subtract one from the hit points. This will just go ahead and get this out of the way. And then down at the bottom, we're going to have to do something a little bit different. So first, we're going to check to see if this is the end of game. So we're going to check to see if this is being destroyed out of hand or if this is being shot at by the player. So if it's being destroyed by the event system, then we're going to need to create, connect directly to on destruction. And this is going to be on the on finished. And instead of on reset, what we're going to do is do on complete destruction. Now, I learned more about C sharp and how to create callables since the last time. So we're doing it a little bit different. We're going to be doing callable dot from and then we're going to put what is called a predicate in there and or an action as C sharp sometimes names them. And it's just two parentheses, an error and a equals and an arrow. And then we're going to say on complete destruction and we can just call that function directly. We don't have to put in a string of text for it. It is just a lot cleaner and more functional. Now, back on the bottom part, we're going to check to see if the hit points are zero. And if they are, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and emit a signal. And this will be signal name dot on destruction in C sharp or just on destruction dot emit on in Godot script. And finally, in the last one, we're going to to call the group scoring group and we're going to call the function on points added with one being the parameter. This is how you pass parameters in group calls. So now we're back here. Let's go ahead and add the damageable script. We're going to do the, let's see what the blaster is. So we're going to do the Godot script version. The signals and groups, you can call either language from either one. So Let's go ahead and set the container node for this one. 
and let's put the hit points at three so you'll have to shoot it three times so let's go ahead and add the score co points container and let's add the c sharp berry and now we have the score label and the victory label so we're going to go ahead and drag those in right there let's save that and we have one other thing to do so over here we have groups for damageable nodes however we created a new group for scoring group so we're going to go ahead and copy that and let's go ahead and go over to score ui containers and let's add that group right there and the only other thing that we need to do is we need to go over to signals and we have now have the on destruction signal so this is how signals work as opposed to just adding yourself to a group and then calling that group you have to connect signals so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and select the score ui container and we need one more thing we need to know what the function we're calling is so this is the on destruction so let's call the on victory so on destruction right there and we'll paste on victory right there and we'll go ahead and hit connect and let's see what it looks like so when you look at the enemy when you shoot them you get a score and congratulations you won now because of what we set up in the code now we can add multiples and they should all be destroyed whenever one is destroyed it should just work out of the box and now they're all gone and that's it there is one more thing that i want to show and i'll show it in both programming languages here you can see we have both languages right here and what we're calling is the get tree dot get nodes in group this can be very useful specifically for when you have ai or you're trying to keep track of any stars on a map to see what the player may have remaining or is missing things like that this is a very nice and clean way where you don't have to go access each of those objects directly you can just get a very quick list of all of the objects available within that group and that's it for today so i wanted to give a little bit of a heads up i will be not posting next week as that is leading up right up to my exiting so i will be back in about three weeks however this weekend i am going to be posting my personal project it's going to be a little bit of a devlog nothing too complicated i also i need to figure out exactly what i want to do next i'm thinking that i might do something that's a little bit more of a step away from code specifically for the beginner series this would be something along the lines of setting up a basic gameplay loop of some capacity this wouldn't strictly speaking co be code though obviously it would have code in it let me know if that's something that you'd be interested in obviously i will be progressing with the beginner series but i may also take a step away from the beginner series for a couple of weeks and do an intermediate episode or two on some of the little bit more harder subjects to wrap your head around things that people enjoy but are a little bit beyond the scope of a beginner tutorial i look forward to hearing all from all of y'all this weekend especially regarding my personal project i'm very excited to show it to you also somewhat nervous i'm going to be honest so looking forward to that and as always i hope all of you have a wonderful day